What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Elden Ring for the Shadow of Erd Tree DLC to get the best performance with the most up-to-date info. Let's get into it. First of all, we'll start off by loading straight into the game itself. You've seen tens of thousands of optimization guides, I'm sure. So, without going through all the normal, this is why you should be making the changes. Here are the best options that you should select in your game based on your system's type being low powered, medium or high powered. Let's get into it. Simply pause the game, head down to system and head across to the display tab over here. Then make sure full screen is set for the screen mode. Resolution should match your display or at least be compatible. Ray tracing should be turned off for the best performance, but you can put it on maybe low if you really want it and you have a ray tracing graphics card and head down to advanced settings. This is where you'll get the majority of your performance. If you have a super high powered system, there's only two things I'd really bother changing and that's depth of field, setting it to off and motion blow to off as well, just for better visibility in game. The rest of these options, if you leave them maxed out, can usually give you pretty good performance, especially if you have a really powerful system. That's what I have here, so I really don't mind doing that. Let's say you have a medium powered system and you wanted to get the best performance out of the game while still having it looking really good. I'll pause the game, head back to system, display, and advanced settings. First of all, if you can, your texture quality should be set to the higher end for a much better looking game as this only affects the amount of VRAM your game uses. For the most part, having this on maximum or high on most GPUs with six or so gigs of VRAM or above should be perfectly fine, so that's where I'll be leaving these. There are a couple of options that you should consider dropping for better performance. First of all, SSAO, set this to medium or high if lighting and dark areas kind of gets you, you can't see what's happening. Effects quality should be set to medium. Then shadow quality as well as volumetric and reflection quality should all be set down to high for a big boost in performance. Then down at the very bottom, global illumination, set this to medium and gross quality down to high. On medium end systems, you should see a great improvement in FPS consistency, frame timing and performance as well. Now, obviously, if you've got a super low end system, you'll probably be dropping everything as low as possible. But if you can, I'd recommend raising texture quality. The higher you go, the better the game will look in quite a dramatic way, but the majority of your performance will come from lowering your lighting quality down to low if not medium and global illumination to low as well. On low end systems, these three options have a major impact on performance, but obviously you'll be lowering pretty much everything almost as low as possible. Now the one thing this game does lack is upscaling of any kind. There's no Nvidia DLSS or FSR 2, 3 or anything like that to be heard of, and sadly, even though we're a couple of years into its release, we still have nothing. Thing. If you want to add something like upscaling to the game, it is actually possible. You'll need a relatively new NVIDIA or AMD GPU, and you can enable this through the driver settings in NVIDIA control panel or AMD's equivalent, where you can add upscaling to the game using NVIDIA NIS, which is NVIDIA image scaling, or AMD RSR, which is the Radeon super resolution. Essentially, once you have this enabled, you can drop your in-game resolution and the game should be scaled to match your monitor. This is pretty cool, but of course it doesn't come with any of the advantages like FSR 3 with frame generation. This game is protected by easy anti cheats so if you want to play online and you're using an FPS uncapper mod, which you can do for solo gameplay, it is probably going to affect your experience, if not be outright dangerous for your account to play online with a mod like that. Using something like lossless scaling, you can actually pretty much double your FPS using frame generation while having the game still perfectly fine without interacting with the ANSI cheat or the game files in any way. For that, I'd recommend setting the game itself to windowed borderless, especially if you have issues tabbing in when you tab out. For me, that's one of the things that I do struggle with here. So I'll be setting the game to full screen windowed or borderless windowed. This can also help raise the FPS cap from 60 to whatever your monitor is set to, but it's not always guaranteed. So if we continue here, you'll see my FPS is still 60 in the top left, but it is what it is. What we can do is use something like loss of scaling to actually double that to 120. So now that I've got it set to borderless windowed, I'll tab out, back into Steam, search for lossless scaling, launch it up. Then with this, make sure I have upscaling set if you want upscaling and frame generation set, especially if you want frame generation support. Obviously, click scale and tab into the game within five seconds. Then you should see a new window pops up just above this one and your FPS should practically be doubled. The only issue is that while you're recording, you don't actually see the difference here as it draws on a layer that things like OBS can't see. Essentially, 
programs like lossless scaling record your game and very quickly display it back onto the same monitor or a different monitor if you wish, full screen and fully interactable. So currently what I'm looking at here is Elden Ring locked to 60, but my actual display is putting out 150 to 160 frames a second, which is huge. The only way to prove this really is to take a picture of it, then zoom in, and now you're looking at a solid 160-ish FPS, which is huge. Obviously though, your mileage may vary, but here it runs super stable, and it's actually a really good experience. Input latency is barely affected, especially as it's a controller game. Anyways, with that, you should now know how to optimize the game for the best performance so that you can enjoy the brand new DLC to the fullest that you can, especially with frame generation, which is a huge addition. So let's touch the arm and let's head into the DLC. There we go. Now, obviously, if you want, you can install an FPS uncapping mod and you'll find links down below in the description if you'd like to do so. But for now, this is how I'll be playing the game just to keep the online experience intact. Anyways, that's really it. So hopefully this video helped you. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot. I'll see you all next time. Ciao. Oh, and a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter.